right. Good afternoon, everyone. My gosh, what a beautiful day. And welcome, Governor, and welcome all to Pipe Stem. What a great crowd we have here. I'm going to take a, a, a moment just to acknowledge a few of our members of the crowd. I'd like to start with some of our, our special guests at Pipe Stem, though. Uh, Tina Baltimore, Carolyn Clayton, Judy Gooding, and Connie Kurtner are here. They're vacationing this week, Governor. They heard you were coming. They have apparently been regulars to Pipe Stem, and I believe I heard that they're golfers also, and I heard a heck of a, a score. That, so, so congratulations on that. I don't want to repeat it because I'm kind of jealous, and I heard that was like your worst score. Anyway, um, we're so glad to have you all here and glad that you could join this event. You know, it's wonderful to, to be able to showcase these, these renovations here, especially and have some, some, some regular guests in attendance. Um, we've got a lot of folks from Summers County this morning. I'd like to say hi to Senator Jack David Woodrum. We've got our Sheriff Justin Ferris on site. Three of our county commissioners, Charlie Saunders, Ted Kula, and Mike Gore. We've got City Council person Larry Moore, Larry Metter, I'm sorry, Larry. We've got Hinton City Manager Chris Meadows. We've got our director of the Summers County CVB, Rebecca Peterson, and also the board president, Stephanie Stifler. So I hope I didn't miss anybody, but we're so glad to see everyone out this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share this visit with you to Pipe Stem. It's one of my favorite places. You know, as a former superintendent of Pipe Stem and someone who spent their entire career in West Virginia outdoors, I can't begin to tell you how incredible it is to look at all the things we've been able to accomplish under the leadership of Governor Justice. If it weren't for his support, we wouldn't be here today and we wouldn't be in such a favorable position when it comes to tourism and economic growth. And I know the folks in Summers and Mercer, Mercer counties really embrace and support those, those items. It, it's a staple for these areas. Our governor also embraces that, that concept. You know, Pipe Stem and its, its inception was to be an economic driver for the area. The governor has realized that. His investment shows prime example. I hope every one of you take the opportunity to go inside and see these renovations. I believe Superintendent Hager has one of the rooms open, the spa's up and running. We're so excited about that facility being added to Summers County. The overall investment allowed for renovations at McKeever Lodge and Mountain Creek Lodge, the cabins, the campground, the aerial, aerial tram, et cetera, et cetera. I don't even know where to, to stop this list at. And it's just another success story that we can praise the governor with because of his belief in parks and tourism. I'm honored also this week to introduce our, our next speaker. Maybe she doesn't need an introduction. You know, we're in the middle of National Travel and Tourism Week, and I want to take this chance to publicly thank you for the work that you do. Chelsea has put together a team that is just full of, of commitment, dedicate. They eat sleep and breathe tourism, not only for state parks, but for every private facility that we have in the state of West Virginia. So Chelsea, I, uh, I, I can't thank you enough for all that you do for our system and uh, um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, welcome to Pipe Sim. I am delighted to be here today. Um, we've been on a bit of a state park road tour lately I was laughing with the governor. This is almost like a regular occurrence now. Um, we have, as Brett said, put 150 plus million dollars into these parks. Um, every single cabin, the lodges, everything is being upgraded, um, which is not only an enhancement for the residents of West Virginia that our, our own playgrounds are getting better, but it's also providing a place for folks from out of state to come to and making us a national leader. Um, this seems sort of regular now. We do this so often that I feel like it's, it's almost losing um, how, we've almost lost sight of how special this is. But to put it in perspective, again, 151 million in renovations. Um, the first year I was here, we did no renovations, and the marketing budgets for state parks was $50,000. Um, the governor, the legislature has completely turned that upside down. We are now putting literally millions into marketing the parks and West Virginia tourism, um, and these facilities are just outstanding. Yesterday, the governor and I were in a meeting um, with a prospect who's looking to come to West Virginia, and it's too early to say who that is, 
but it was interesting to listen to hear him talk about our state. And one of the things he said is, it feels like West Virginia is having a magical moment. I couldn't agree more. We're seeing everything. Yesterday, we had this new record on the surplus. We've got huge new companies coming in. We're making every travel list coming and going for being a top destination. Um, and it's all because of the governor. So governor, I wanna thank you and I wanna share, and you and I haven't even talked about this, but we got some new research in a week or so ago that was looking at the impact of all these tourism ads. So we're, our, our budget is about $25 million a year now. Huge increase, we've more than tripled. And we, it's important to make sure that those ads and what we're doing is paying off. So we do a ton of survey research to look at that. And the good news is the research is showing that more people are coming and that 60% of people who see our ads are very likely to come visit within 12 months. But I think what's more impactful to me and what's more impactful to the state and what's creating that magical moment is that when we survey people who are seeing these ads, who are reading about coverage of things happening in West Virginia, they all think about our state differently. They've started to think of West Virginia as a better place to live, a better place to retire, a better place to go to school, a better place to move. It has changed the state's overall image. So Governor, I can't thank you enough for your vision on this, for getting us to where we are today, but because of you, we are truly in the national spotlight. So again, thank you and welcome the Governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Justice. Well, let me just say this. I don't need this to look at. You know, Brett and Chelsea said some really nice stuff about me. You know, they said nice stuff about our legislature and they, you know, whether it be our senator or nice stuff about you in lots of ways. But the real truth of the matter is just one thing. And that's just this. Naturally, somebody had to come up with an idea that some way, somehow, we had to change our image in West Virginia. We know how good we are, but people on the outside, they didn't buy it. They really didn't buy it. I really, really, really wanted to do that, and it's worked. But there's so many people that deserve so much credit. I mean, really and truly, all of you. Every single one of you. You know, at the end of the day, I'm okay with being a grain of sand in the background that maybe came up with an idea or maybe came up and said, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, or push the right buttons and everything, and along the way. But, but I'm more proud that all of us are in this together, pulling the rope together. All of us are putting the licks in. And at the end of the day, it's really working. I mean, can you just imagine this? Now, just look. Just look at this place right here. Just look at where you're at right now. Now, you can go anywhere. I don't care where you go in this country. Maybe where you go in the world. It doesn't get any better than right here where we're at right now. It doesn't. You know, we just needed to absolutely be able to tell the world exactly that. And then if they really got really out there, we needed to rub it in their face a little bit. And believe me, B, I was really glad to rub it in their face. But with all that being said, let's just step back and just think just a second. I don't, I don't say these words in any way to be taking credit for anything. But when, when I got there, things were pretty doggone tough. I mean, I don't care how you cut it, this state was bankrupt. And, and we dug in, lots and lots and lots of folks. And we dug in and we started down a path. Now, to give you the magnitude of what I'm talking about, I, and, and, and I only do this to give you the magnitude. Now, just think about this. When I got there, and I'm getting there in January, you're in the middle of the year, you're supposed to have a balanced budget. You know, you, you know that's, that's law. But the first thing they told me was, we're going to be $217 million short in the year that we're in right now. And we're halfway through the year. Not on my watch, we're halfway through the year. So we dig in, and we just start working. 
And some way, somehow, we ran across the finish line with a like a $4 million surplus. It was unbelievable. And we celebrated. My good kind of living, we celebrated like crazy. It reminds me so much, and I don't want to bore you, but I need to tell you this story. When my dad died, there were so many things that my dad was doing that I didn't have a clue about. And so there was all these companies, and we worked night and day. And dad was my best man in my wedding, and it, it just, boom, he was just gone. 68 years old. Nobody anticipated that. But when they brought me the audit the next year and they piled all these companies, good gracious, they were, they're this high. And they piled them all up in front of me. The one on the top was the combined audit of everything. And with all the companies together, we made $19,000. And I was tickled to death. I can absolutely promise you I was so proud and so tickled that we made $19,000. Because really and truly, at the end of the day, it was a tough time, a really tough time. And I didn't really have all the pieces of the puzzle. It's so similar to exactly what happened in West Virginia. We dug in, and somehow, somehow, we made $4 million, I think, in the first year. Well, now just imagine, and I only tell you that to get a grip on what I'm going to tell you right now. Yesterday, yesterday, we came out with the April financial report. One month, one month, we made $253 million in West Virginia in one month. And year to date, year to date in 10 months, we're $993 million to the good at a surplus in 10 months. Honest to Pete, West Virginia is really cooking, really cooking. We spent $151 million on our parks, and the revenue is through the roof, and more and more and more people are coming, and everything is working. All we had to do was turn you loose. That's all there is to it. And what you've done is off the chart. You know, I think about pipe stem, and let me just tell you this real quick. You know, I, w I was a hotty toddy golfer at one time, and I had brown hair, and I was skinny. You know, and, and there was a guy that became their first uh, golf pro and golf course superintendent here, I think. His name was Harry Ellis, I believe. And Harry Ellis, I knew him real well because I played against him over and over and over. And I was a kid, and he was a really, really great golfer. And he started to work over here, and he called me, and he said, you need to come over here because you won't believe what this is going to look like. And they were out there with bulldozers and doing all kinds of stuff, and lo and behold, look. Just look. Listen to the birds. Look at the dogwoods in bloom. You can probably hear the turkeys gobbling because the turkeys gobble like crazy when the dogwoods are in bloom. It's the best time of the year to spring turkey hunt. And absolutely just look at what's going on. I'm glad it wasn't me. <laughs> but I could tell you, I could go on and on and on. I am really, really proud of what we're doing in West Virginia. And the reason I am the most proud is because it, it is telling our story. It is telling who we are. That's all there is to it. I've always known you were just great beyond belief. I've known it forever. It's the very single reason that I ran for office. I don't want anything. I've never wanted a thing, nothing. But absolutely, with all that being said, you know, let me tell you this story real quick. We started having a golf tournament up the Greenbrier. You know, right off the get-go, I was on CBS and I was bragging and talking about how great West Virginia was. And I had no clue of ever thinking about running for office. But there I am on CBS with Jim Nance. And then I walked out on the golf course after that and there was a guy that came up to me and I'll never, I've tried so many times to rem remember his last name and I can't. 
He said, I'm Bob something. He said, I'm 87 years old. He reached out and grabbed my hands, and his big tears were just running right down his face. He said, thank you for making me feel good about who I am as a West Virginian. Let me tell you, we're, in my opinion, the best of the best of the best of the best. That's all there is to it. And absolutely, we're in the right spot with all the right stuff and the right people and the right seasons and everything else under the sun. All you've got to do is turn you loose because anybody that comes is going to be really, really proud. Now, the only other thing I would say is just, the, just this one thing because, because I know you've really kind of maybe this much wanted to see me and this much want to see baby dog. So, Chris, <laughs> get baby dog. She rode over here with me. Just set her down there. She'll come. Come on, baby. Take your time now. Come on, girl. Come on, baby. You can make it. Come on. Come on, baby. All right, get in your chair. Go on. Come on, baby. Now, she'll get up there. She'll, she'll, come on, baby. Come on, you can do it. Well, she's not going to do it if you're going to help her. <laughs> so now the whole story is complete. Congratulations on all these incredible renovations, and congratulations to all you do every day. Really and truly, at the end of the day, I say it over and over, and I'm going to keep on saying it. If I ever write books, they'll be called The Easy Stuff is Always the Toughest Stuff to Find. It's really true. If you'll just think about it, how many, how many inventions or whatever do you think, uh, you, do you see and say, gosh, I would have thought, I could have thought of that, but you didn't. You didn't. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, when it boils right down to it, this little thing makes you smile and she loves everybody. <laughs> what are you doing? And nevertheless, I don't know how in the world it could be more simpler than just that. If we all could just love everyone and make each other smile and don't really care if you're Republican or Democrat or rich or poor or black or white or whatever it may be, if we could just do that, wouldn't it be a lot better world? And so at the end of the day, she sure makes me smile and she loves every single last one of you, I promise. And she's dialing into a chicken nugget right now. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Thank you all so much. Yeah, let's cut the ribbon. Superintendent Hager, would you come join us? And when we get done, I'll stay right here. If you want to come up and say hi to baby dog, I'll, I'll stay right here with you. too much movement, the staff at Pipe Stem does have a little something for baby dog. So we'll ask Tara to bring that up. Okay, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. 
Okay, now we're going we're to just hold off on these. Okay, thank y'all so much. Bless y'all in every way.